Okay, good morning. Today, uh, for pre-calculus, we're going to be looking at solving trig equations. <clears throat> so, I want to take a minute to uh, go over, uh, you know, how some of these reference angles work just one more time. Um, the There's a group of angles that kind of go together here. Um, you know, if I get... 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 210, 330. You know, those are where all four of them have a reference angle of 30, okay? Now we can also do those in radians, and those are listed over here. 30 degrees is pi over 6, 150 degrees is 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 corresponding with the 210 and 330 as well. So we have these groups of angles that go together, okay? 45, 135, 225 and 315 go together, you know, because those will be if your reference angle is 45 degrees. Um, and those are in radians, uh, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4 uh, correspond with a 45, 135, 225, and 315. And the same thing can go for 60, 120, 240, and 300. And a reminder that 60 degrees is pi over 3. Uh, 120 is 2 pi over 3, 240 is 4 pi over 3, and 300 is 5 pi over 3. Um, also, <clears throat> hopefully by now you figured out that, you know, the um, sine and cosine are positive and negative in certain quadrants. The cosine is the x-coordinate, and the sine is the y-coordinate, which makes, you know, the sine positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Negative in 3 and 4, and cosine is uh, positive in 1 and 4, and negative in 2 and 3. And then tangent is what you get if you divide the two, since one of the definitions for tangent is sine over cosine. That's some of the background information that we'll be using in this section. <clears throat> okay, For like all of these problems, we're going to be given our answers in the between 0 and 2 pi. <clears throat> which means often you're going to get two answers, not always, but usually, uh, and, and possibly you might even get four answers. And these reference angles are going to keep coming up uh, in that uh, to solve these. So there's kind of two parts to this problems. <clears throat> you know, the first part is, you know, solving the equation. Um, and then the second part is finding, you know, your reference angles and, and uh, using those. So, so that's what we're going to be doing here today. Okay. Now, the first one, you know, just like everything else you've done in, you know, mathematics for the last several years, you're solving for x. You're getting x alone, okay? Um, so that's the first thing uh, I'm going to do. The second part is I'm going to look at, you know, the cosine where it's positive and negative. So let me start with this one. So I want to get x alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides, okay? And I get 2 cosine of x equals 1. Next, I want to get the cosine of x alone, so I'd like to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to divide it since it's right in front. And now I got the cosine of x equals 1 half, okay? <clears throat> so, now there's, you know, we've gone through these, you know, special right triangles so many times by now. Hopefully you're starting to see, we got to figure out what the reference angle is. So, uh, let's see if this is 30... And uh, opposite of the 30 is the 1, 2, the square root of 3 is opposite the 60, which means the cosine of 30 is going to be 60 degrees. So <clears throat> um, 60 degrees is pi over 3, okay, which means that's one of my answers. Um, however, the cosine is positive here and here. So if this is pi over 3, and this is pi over 3, that means my two answers are going to be pi over 3 is one of them. The other one will be almost all the way around. 6 pi over 3 would be the same as 2 pi, okay? So that would be uh, 6 pi over 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, equals 2 pi, which means I'm, I'm pi over 3 short, which gives me, if I subtract 1 pi over 3 from 6 pi over 3, I get... 5 pi over 3. Those are my two answers. In degrees, that would have been 60 degrees and 300 degrees, and you could go, you know, 60 degrees, 300 degrees, and turn them into radians. That's another way to do it. Um, 
But we are doing these in radians <clears throat> because up here it said, you know, if to give your answer in terms of pi, and in terms of pi means radians, okay? All right, good. So that was the first one. Second problem, very similar to the first one. So I start out by subtracting 1 from both sides, and I got 2 times the sine of x equals negative 1. Next, I want to get the sine of x alone, so I'm dividing by 2. And I get sine of x equals negative 1 half. All right, so I need to find my reference angle here. Now, I'm going to forget the negative part for a minute. I'm back to that same 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's either that or it's going to be the 45, 45, 90 for an awful lot of, almost all of these, actually. Uh, so let's see, 1, 2, square root of 3. So what's which angle gives me 1 half? Um, this would be opposite over hypotenuse, which is, that's your sine, which means the opposite of the 30 is the, the 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 one is opposite the 30 so therefore 30 degrees is my reference angle which is pi over six <clears throat> okay so i got the reference angle now i know that the sine is negative in those two quadrants so that's where my two angles are going to go all right so um you know it's here and here and if this is pi over 6 and this is pi over 6, those are my two answers, except, you know, how far is it from here over to here? Well, that's uh, 6 pi over 6 is halfway around, and 12 pi over 6 is all the way around, right? Because 1 pi is halfway around the circle, 2 pi is all the way around, which gives me 6 pi plus over 6 plus 1 pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. And 12 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. And those will be my, my two answers. All right. Next one, a tangent. So <clears throat> subtract 1 from both sides. I get tangent of x equals negative 1. So forget the negative for a minute. Let's see. I see the 1 there, which means, you know, that probably an isosceles triangle for 45, 45, 90. 1, 1 squared of 2. This is opposite over adjacent. You can always put that over 1, right? Which means uh, 45 is my reference angle, which is pi over 4. And I'm looking for where it's negative, right? Which means I'm in these two quadrants up here and here. So um, here and here. So my two reference angles are pi over 4. So you know how much is that and how much is that? So 4 pi over 4 is halfway around, 8 pi over 4 is twice around, which gives me, let's see, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Those will give me my two answers. <clears throat> which will give me negative one when I punch them. You can punch them into the calculator that way too, right? Okay, good. Number four. I got a squared in there. That's going to change things slightly at the end, you'll see. Uh, so I start the same way. You know, I mean, this is really the same as 3y minus 1 equals 0. If you solve that, you've gotten down to, actually, this one's got a squared on it. You get y squared alone or tangent squared alone, same idea, okay? Just in case anybody's stuck on how you actually start solving that. So I subtract, add 1 for both sides, and then I divide by 3, and I got <clears throat> tangent squared of x equals 1 third, and then I got to take the square root of both sides, okay? So I'm going to got tangent of x, square root, put the sign on that, radical, radical, so tangent x equals Square root of one third is one over the square root of three. Okay. Remember, to take square root of a fraction, take the square root of a numerator, square root of the denominator, boom. Uh, and, which is also super important, I got it to the square uh, plus or minus. Okay. So this one, I'm actually going to end up with four answers, is the way that works out. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, tangent back to my triangles. I see a square root of three, which implies 30, 60, 90. So this is 1, 2, and the square root of 3 is over here. 
So which angle gives me one over the square root of three? And remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So which angle is opposite the one? That would be my 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is my reference angle, which is pi over six in radians. <clears throat> so uh, now this is going to have all four quadrants. Did I draw it up here? I didn't. So because it's plus or minus, I'm going to have all four of them, right? Because tangent, I'm looking for where it's positive and negative, which would be like everywhere. Okay, so, you know, you're going to end up with all four of those. Remember those families of angles I had up there? This is pi over six. 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 So I'm going to have four answers. Pi over six. Remember, this is six pi over six. This is 12 pi over six. Uh, five pi over six. 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Those are my four answers. And I'm done after that, okay? So the plus or minus is almost easier in some ways. I guess, I don't know, the way I think about it. Next one. Uh, so I got to add 1 to both sides. I want to get that sine squared alone. So I got 4 sine squared of x equals 1. Divide by 4. I get sine squared of x equals one fourth. Next, I got to take the square root of both sides. Solve this, so I got sine of x equals plus or minus square root of one fourth. Okay. Square root of one fourth is one half. Okay. Square root of one is one. Square root of two is four. Uh, square root of four is two. Okay. So <clears throat> back to that. 30, 60, 90 triangle for the millionth time in this course. So let's see, 30, 60, 1, 2, square root of 3. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So which angle is opposite the 1? That's the 30 degrees. That's my reference angle, which is pi over 6 in radians, which is what we're working with. So it's going to be plus or minus, so I'm going to have all four of those angles again, okay? Um, pi over 6, pi over 6, all four of them, right? Uh, which I think is actually, isn't it the same answers I just did in the last one? I mean, it doesn't really matter that, you know, this is the tangent because it's all the same reference angles. So all four of them are going to be the same, pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 would be almost all the way around. Okay. <clears throat> so there's your four answers for that one. All right, next. Ah, cosecant. All right, so changing things up a little bit. First thing I'd like to do, get the cosecant squared alone. So I'm going to divide by 3. Okay. And I get cosecant squared of x equals 4 thirds. Square root both sides to get the cosecant alone. Square root of 4 thirds plus or minus. Anytime you do the square root, you got to have the plus or minus. So cosecant of x equals square root of 4 is 2 over the square root of 3, right? Now, remember cosecant <coughs> is equal to 1 over the sine of x. So I can flip those fractions, right? So this is really the inverse of the sine. And if I flip that, that's a completely legal move there, OK? Since they're inverses, you flip one, flip the fraction upside down. So now, because you know it's tough to work with cosecants, it's much easier to work with sines. I go back to my 30, 60, 90 triangle, which Reference angle is going to be to have the square root of 3. This is opposite over hypotenuse, which means my reference angle will be 60 <clears throat> since since the square root of 3 is opposite the 60 degree. Okay, so uh, let's see. And I got plus or minus there. I don't want to lose that. I had that up here. So I'm going to have all four of them, all right? So, you know, back to my four reference angles being what are you looking for? all four of those. This is going to be pi over 3, 
pi over 3. All four of those reference angles will be pi over 3. So halfway around would be 3 pi over 3. All the way around would be 6 pi over 3, since that's 2 pi. <clears throat> All right, so my four answers. I know there's going to be four because I saw the plus or minus. Pi over 3. Uh, 2 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3. And 5 pi over 3. And those <coughs> are my answers there. Okay, next. So, 2 times cosine squared. I see that squared. <coughs> Chances are I'm going to have four answers. So I got 2 cosine squared of x equals 1. Divide by 2. And I get cosine squared of x equals 1 half. Take the square root of both sides. And I get cosine of x equals the square root of 1 half, plus or minus. Square root of 1 is 1. And I'll just leave the square root of 2. So I see a 2, which means chances are this is going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. 1, 1, square root of 2. Which means our reference angle is <clears throat> 45. Since that's what's opposite the 1. And 45 degrees is pi over 4 in radians, which means all four of these are going to be your reference angles. So that's pi over 4, that's pi over 4, that's pi over 4, and that's pi over 4. <clears throat> so this is 4 pi over 4 is halfway around, 8 pi over 4 is all the way around. So my four answers will be pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 is almost halfway. A little more than halfway is 5 pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4. All right. <clears throat> Those are my four answers. Going on to the next one. <clears throat> All right. This one's a little trickier. First thing I'd like to do is bring everything to one side. Okay. I like to have equals zero, which means I'm going to subtract 2 sine x for both sides. So I get sine squared of x minus 2 sine of x equals 0. Now, I'm going to pull a sine of x out of there, okay? So if I go sine of x, so I had two sines and I pulled one out. I have Minus 2 times the sine of x, but I pulled the sine of x out, which leaves me just with the 2, all right? So if anybody's stuck on what I'm doing here, this is really the same as basic factoring. You know, if I had x squared minus 2x equals 0, this would be the same as x times x minus 2, okay? That's what I did there. Same thing, except x is the sine of x, <clears throat> okay? All right, so now I've got two things that multiply together equal 0, therefore equals sine of e Either one of them equals zero, or one or both of them equals zero. And now I solve both of them, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is the unit circle thing. Remember, the sine is the y coordinate. Oh, yeah, except that point is one, zero, not zero, one. This is zero, one. This is. Uh, negative 1, 0. This one, 0, negative 1. So which one gives me 0 for the y-coordinate? That would be uh, either 0 or 180. 180 is pi in degrees, so I got two answers right there. <clears throat> and this one, if I add 2 to both sides, I get the sine of x equals 2. Uh, this is actually, that's undefined. There's no solution to that part of it, okay? The sine only goes between 1 and negative 1. Uh, we learned that when we did graphing. Uh, remember the amplitude? Uh, this got an amplitude of 1. <clears throat> so you can punch in your calculator too, you know, go inverse sine of, of x, inverse sine of 2, and you'll get 
error or something. So this has got two answers. Only two, the second part becomes uh, irrelevant. Okay, so that's that, that's that problem. Next one, secant squared minus 10. Let's do a you try. So why don't you try this one out yourself? Remember secant and cosine are inverses. So why don't you solve that and, uh, and come back. And I am going to flash over here quickly to the answer there. <clears throat> That's how you get there to the answers. Got four of them in that case. And I'll move on to this one. So this one, <clears throat> you know, if you can factor, this is a factoring problem. I see a trinomial up there. It's got three terms. You know, this is the same as y squared minus y minus 2. If you can factor this, you can factor cosecant squared. You know, this is just pretty basic, right? What multiplies to negative 2 and adds up to negative 1? This is minus 2 times y plus 1. Hopefully you can do that by now, which means this is the same thing, except it's cosecant of x minus 2 and cosecant of x plus 1. Okay, so those are the same things, just, you know, uh, with a little twist, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, now I got two things that multiply together equal 0, so I'm going to set both of them equal to 0. Cosine, cosecant of x minus 2 equals 0. Cosecant of x plus 1 equals 0. And when I solve this out, I get cosecant of x equals, if I add 2, I get 2. Over here, I subtract 1. Cosecant of x equals negative 1. All right, now, remember, cosecant and sine are inverses. So if I switch this to sine, um, <clears throat> I can flip that upside down, right? Could have made that over 1. Same thing over here. Equals, of course, when you flip the inverse of negative 1, it's still negative 1. It's one of the only ones that's like that. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. This one. This is definitely looking like a 30, 60, 90. 1, 2, square root of 3, opposite over hypotenuse is my sine. So which angle is opposite the 1? That would be my 30 degrees is my reference angle. Um, but there's 2, right? Sine is positive in the first two quadrants, which means this is 30, except we're doing radians, right? So 30 degrees is pi over 6. So I get pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Those are two answers there. Now I got to get this one too. Remember the sign, we did this in the, where's that last problem with the circle, unit circle. Um, that one, right? So I'm looking for where this y coordinate is negative 1, which is uh, down at the very bottom here, right? That's the only one that gives me y coordinate of negative 1. So that would be. Um, 3 pi over 2, 270 degrees, 3 pi over 2. So I got one answer there, and I got two over here, which gives me three answers altogether for that one. So that one's got a little different twist to it. <clears throat> so this one, I see that I got two terms, and they both have secant in it. So I can factor this out. I mean, this is the same as x y minus 2x equals 0, and I could pull out an x, which leaves me with y minus 2. Okay, it's the same idea, except that the secant, the secant um, of x is like x, okay? Oops, I want parentheses there. I don't want. Which leaves me with cosecant of x minus 2 equals 0, okay? <clears throat> so I pulled the secant out of both of those terms and left me with cosecant of x minus 2 inside the parentheses, right? Um, so now, once again, I've got two things that multiply together equals 0. I set them both equal to 0. The secant of x equals 0 or the cosecant of x minus 2 equals 0. <clears throat> um, so secant is the inverse of cosine. If I flip 0 over 1 upside down, you, you get 1 over 0. And that, my friends, is undefined. 
This one though, let's see what happens here. If I add two, I get the cosecant of x equals two. And a reminder that the cosecant and the sine are inverses. So if I flip that two upside down, I get one half. This one's gonna have some answers. <clears throat> um, so if I do my, you know, your triangle over, over and over again, the sine, is opposite over hypotenuse, which means my reference angle is 30, which is pi over 6. And the sine is positive in two quadrants, 1 and 2. So this is pi over 6. This is pi over 6, which means my two answers are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Those are my answers. Okay. Next one. Uh, this one's a little trickier. I got to actually do some work with factoring it. This thing is, oh, this is pretty easy numbers. So this is the same as factoring 2y squared plus 3y plus 1, all right? So if I was to factor that, I'd get 2y plus 1 times y plus 1, okay? So, <clears throat> which means if I change the y to cosine, I get 2 cosine x plus 1 times cosine x plus 1 equals zero, all right? So now I can put both these things, set both those parentheses equal to zero, two cosine x plus one equals zero, and cosine x plus one equals zero. <clears throat> so this one, I subtract one, I get two cosine x equals negative one, divide by two, I get cosine x equals negative one half. So cosine is negative in quadrants two and three, um, oh, I need the reference angle, right? This is a 30, 60, 90. 1, 2, square to 3. So, <clears throat> which angle is cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse? Which angle is adjacent to the 1, which is 60 degrees, which is pi over 3? So I got two of them over here and pi over three. So this is pi over three. This is pi over three, which means I got two answers, pi over, <clears throat> uh, no, this is two pi over three. How far is it to there? How far is it all the way to there? And four pi over three. There's two of my answers. Now let me check the other one. <clears throat> I got this one over here. If I solve that, I get cosine of x equals negative one. Uh, so the cosine's the negative, <clears throat> excuse me, the cosine's the x. So I'm looking for where the cosine is negative one. Um, so that's back to my unit circle, you know, the coordinates of this circle. Um, you know, where is um, the x coordinate negative one? Well, that brings me over here to uh, 180 degrees, which is the same as pi. So that's my, my other answer. So I got three answers, two pi over three, four pi over three, and pi, okay? And that's it for that problem. Next one, this one's kind of interesting. I'm gonna start by adding three to both sides because I can get those to just cancel out. So now I got the sine of x equals the cosine of x, and I'm going to bring everything to one side, so I'm going to divide by the cosine. And you're probably asking why, and now that I've put sine of x over cosine of x, cosine divided by cosine is 1, right? Now, hopefully you've learned by now that sine over cosine is the same as the tangent of x. Okay, so tangent of x equals 1, which means, you know, I'm back to these triangles. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means, you know, which one uh, tangents opposite over adjacent, which gives me 45 degrees is my reference angle, which is pi over 4. Okay, and then I'm looking for where the tangent's positive, which is 1 and 3, which means this is pi over 4, and this is pi over 4. So my two answers are going to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And those are my two answers. All right, so uh, next one. 
is um, my last one. And this one's kind of cool because I'm going to switch these into um, their inverse functions. All right, so secant is 1 over the cosine of x. We just said that the tangent is the same as the sine over the cosine. All right. Now, I have common denominators. I can add these numerators together and put them over the same denominator. Now, here's where it gets a little more interesting. So I got two things that equal 1 over 1. So in order for this to be true, I'm looking for where is the 1 plus the sine of x equals 1, and where does the cosine of x equals 1. So on this one, if I subtract 1, I get that the sine of x equals 0, and where does the cosine of x equal 1. I would like both of those things to be true. So I'm back to my um, unit circle. And remember, the sine is the y-coordinate, and the cosine is the x. So I'm looking for where is the cosine 1 uh, and the x, uh, the sine is 0. The coordinate is 1, 0. That's right here, which is 0 degrees or 0 radians. So that's the answer, OK? I know that's a little bit tricky, but, but that's what it is. So anyway, uh, that's all I got time for for today. Have a great evening, and I will see you all soon.